Now, the topic we're having is the atomic structure. And in this topic, atomic structure, uh, we are going to discuss in details uh, what uh, entails the atom. In Form 1, we learned about the atom. But here we want to get inside the atom apart from just defining what's an atom. The atomic structure, just like in Form 1, the divination stands. We define an atom as the smallest particle of an element that can take part in a chemical reaction. Now this atom is made up of three subatomic particles. And I want somebody in the group to read for us the atoms as they appear in the screen. One person, very fair loud, have said we have three subatomic particles. And somebody to tell us who, which one are they. Feruns, unmute yourself, Feruns, Proton. protons, okay. and protons. Yes. Electrons. Electrons. electrons, electrons, yes, and neutrons. very good, we have protons, electrons, and neutrons, and neutrons. meaning the atom has three subatomic particles, as Ferud has said, we have the protons, the electrons and the neutrons. Very good, girl. Now, the proton is positively charged as a, a positive charge. And this charge, it is found at the center of the atom. And as it is found at the center of the atom, I want Mariam to tell us, uh, to unmute yourself, Ma Mariam, Mariam, unmute yourself. I want to ask you a question. Have you? Now, it is found at the center of the atom. What's the, the name of the center of the atom where we have the, the proton? Mariam, have I unmuted you? Perun's ghost Mariam has a problem with the... What is the name? Continue, Mariam. The neutron is made of positive or negatively charged. Yeah. Made of negatively or positively charged that neutron. Yes. Like proton, if proton it is found in the center of the proton called nuclear. Yes. The number of protons and neutrons in an atom of an element is Yes. Yes. Okay, very good. Very good, Mariam. Now, yeah, I have a diagram which tries to explain what Mariam and Ferus have told, told us that the atom at the center it has a mass whereby we have the positive and then it is surrounded by the electrons which are the negative. So the protons they occupy the center which is positively charged and the center we term this as the, the nucleus. Then what is surrounding the nucleus are uh, the electrons. We form a, a, a cloud of electrons. So that's what the two girls have tried to tell us. Now, in this diagram, I have an example of carbon. It has six protons at the center and the six neutrons. Remember the neutrons also occupy the center part. Then we have the electrons, they surround the nucleus, which contains the positive charged particles. The neutrons 
have no charge, but protons are the positively charged and electrons are negatively charged. Now in this case, when you look at the uh, protons, here I have a table with the first 20 elements. When you look at hydrogen, it has one proton, one electron, and zero neutrons. Helium, it has two protons, two electrons, two neutrons. Remember, I told you that the number of protons is equal to the number of electrons. Then we say this atom is electrically neutral. Yeah. And the number of protons is equal to the atomic number. That's why this one, the number of protons, equal to the number of electrons, equal to the atomic number. Somebody, somebody please switch off your microphone. I don't know whose microphone is on. Okay, we can continue. Lithium has three protons, three electrons, and four neutrons. When you look at the protons, it's equal to the atomic number, which is three, three. Electrons is equal to also atomic number, three, three. But the mass number, which is the protons plus neutrons. When you add the two, you get, for example, hydrogen as one proton, zero neutron, hence the mass number is one, one plus zero. With helium as protons two, neutrons two, and then the mass number is four because it is two plus two, you get four. Lithium as three protons, four neutrons, so it is three plus four, you get seven as the mass number. Therefore, mass number is protons plus neutrons. When you continue with up to neon, you can continue, it is the same story. Sodium, let's look for calcium, it has neutrons, protons, they are 20, electrons 20, neutrons 20, and then the mass atomic number is 20, and the mass number is 40. Now, most atoms exist as isotopes. So, one guy to read for me the meaning of an isotope. Just read what is an isotope. I don't want to choose. I've chosen Mariam, I've chosen Felunz, another person to. Or I choose, let me see. Mm, who is this? Iman. Iman, unmute and read for us uh, what. Uh, isotopes are yes these are isotopes are atoms of the same element having the same number of protons by different number of mass number different mass numbers very good so she's saying that atoms are uh, isotopes are atoms of the same element. They have the same number of protons, which is the source the same as atomic number, but different uh, number of neutrons. That's the mass number. It means my, by convention, isotopes are written with the mass number as a superscript and atomic number as 
a, a subscript. For example, if I'm writing an element, let me just uh, demonstrate, an element like, let's say, P, so the mass number is written, yes, P has a mass number of 40, is written at the top, that we mean a, a superscript, and atomic number of 20 is written as a subscript. That's say you have M, mass number, and atomic number N. So you write the mass number as a superscript and the atomic number as a subscript. Now, these uh, examples of how we write the mass numbers and atomic numbers of the first 20 elements, when you look at them, we have started with the uh, hydrogen. Hydrogen has one mass number, atomic number one. Helium, mass number four, atomic number four. Lithium, mass number seven, atomic number seven. Beryllium, mass number nine, atomic number nine. You should see the mass number is written on top. Magnesium, mass number 24, atomic number 12. Sodium, mass number 23, atomic number 11. So that's how we present uh, an atom or an element together with its atomic number and the mass numbers. So the mass number is written as a super script and the atomic number written as a subscript now guys here we have the table of some naturally occurring isotopes so we have some elements for instance hydrogen exists in three isotopes we have the first uh, hydrogen, which has a mass number of 1. We have the second, which has a mass number of 2. The first one, a mass number of 1. The second, a mass number of 2. And then a mass number of 3. So we are saying these are elements of the same element. They are having the same atomic number 1. The same atomic number 1, 1, one one but the mass number is changing one three two three so what is making this to change it is because of the existence why is the is it changing the it's because the number of neutrons are changing Now we go to the next slide. We have chlorine. It also exists as three. We have one chlorine with 35, another one with 37. Potassium, we have one with 39, 40, 41. Neon, one with 22, 20, and 21. So these are naturally occurring uh, isotopes. We have oxygen, we have oxygen 16 and oxygen 18, uranium 35, 235 and uranium 238. Now, the mass, it means if an, an atom has three elements, an element exists as three, it means if the element has three atoms, the mass of this element is the average of the three atoms. Now, if it's an average, so it is means you're going to give us some fractions. That's why some of the mass numbers exist in terms of fractions. I mean decimal places. Now, when we calculate this, we have a, a formula that the mass of an average atom of an element it's normally compared to 1 over 12 of carbon 12. That is, we have the mass of an element divided by the mass of 1 over 12 of carbon 5. So this is not going to give us an accurate, it's uh, uh, an accurate answer. 
because it's an average so we're going to see how it works about we can also measure direct using a spectrometer but this is not possible for this case we use a formula which i'm going to show you for instance if you calculate for chlorine that chlorine occurs 75 percent uh, carbon uh, chlorine 35 and 25 percent chlorine 37 then you calculate the atomic mass of chlorine if you go back to the formula is we use the mass number times the atomic abundance for example in calculating this we need to take 30 let me choose a different biro we will take 35 times the abundance of 35 it is 75 then another one is uh, it is a uh, 37 plus we add 37 abundance of 25 then we divide everything by 100 when we do this calculation the answer we get is going to be the relative atomic mass of chlorine So once you do the maths, you find that the answer is 35.5. That is the, now 35.5 is an average. That's why I told you that we may get the answer not as a whole number because we are taking the average. Now in this case, we are not going to have the units. There are no units here because actually is an average so the atomic relative has no units so this means that more atoms of chlorine 35 exist than the atoms of chlorine 20 chlorine 37 so this percentage is just the abundance which one is more abundant than the other and the answer is supposed to be near the more abundant one so in this case if 75 is the most abundant chlorine atom, so the answer should be near 35. That's why our answer was 35.5. Our answer could not be near 37 because 37 is a, a, a less abundant compared to chlorine 35. Let us look at another example. Here we have chlorine, we have uh, potassium, potassium 39. It is 93.1 percent, potassium 40, 0.01 percent, and the potassium 41, 6.81. So, what how we do it? We just take 93.1 times the abundance, the uh, the mass, our uh, mass is a uh, mass number is 39 plus. Uh, abundance 0 0.01 times 40 which is the mass number plus uh, abundance 6.89 times 41 which is the mass number we divide by 100. So um, we are looking for the average. That's how we will. Once we compute, once we compute, we're going to get that. Our answer is also going to be af uh, having decimals because going to be answer is going to be having decimals that's how what i've done 
that one you divide by 100 then finally you get the answer as a decimal now in this case we can also calculate for neon so i want you to take a screenshot of your of your phone so that you can do this one this is an assignment take a screenshot of your phone and then do number three i've done number one and number two so take a screenshot then later you do number number three then also i've done number three you are going to post it in the group you post in the class and i'll mark you you do you take a picture then you upload in the class hope everybody has taken let me go back take a screenshot of that question and then once you do uh number three you will just yeah there's a clue there but hope you have taken a screenshot one two three it's okay now electrons are found in energy levels and an energy level is just a fixed region whereby it is surrounding the nucleus and it is occupied by electrons so it is a region which is fixed and it is surrounding the nucleus now we have the energy levels they are labeled we can label them number one two three starting from the one nearest the nucleus coming out now the first energy levels is occupied by a maximum of two electrons the second one eight continuing but today the third one is occupied by a maximum of eight or it can occupy 18. the fourth electron energy level occupies a maximum of eight electrons it can occupy also 18 or 32 if the electrons are available the fourth i repeat it can occupy eight 18 or 32 if the electrons are available the third can occupy 8 or 18 if the electrons are available so the, this arrangement is what we call electronic arrangement or electronic configuration or electronic structure Now, when we write the electronic structure, it means we are going to use the number of electrons to write. For example, hydrogen has one electron. It means it has just the first energy level. Helium has two. So it means it's going to have two energy levels. Now, that one will continue. I don't want to take a lot of time uh, explaining that. We have. I want. To, we have four minutes. I want to show you a certain video, uh, so that which tries to explain what I've just showed you. Let me just because we have six minutes remaining. I just show you the. Somebody is communicating. Mm, it's okay. It's okay. Any question before I move on? It's time. Be loud. The next class. Just type. I'm not getting your voice clearly. Type I read. Electrons are negatively charged and are located around the nucleus. 
an atom has the same number of negatively charged electrons as it has positively charged protons in the nucleus. Therefore, atoms are electrically neutral. Electrons are distributed in a definite path around the nucleus and are called shells or orbits. This concept was introduced by Niels Bohr. According to Bohr, different electrons revolve around the nucleus in their own different orbits. The atom has been compared to the solar system. In an atom, the nucleus is the sun and the electrons are the planets. Just like planets in the solar system, each electron revolves around the nucleus in its own different orbit. The orbits or shells are represented by the letters K, L, M, etc. The maximum number of electrons present in a shell is given by the formula 2x squared, where N is the orbit number of energy cells. The first orbit of K shell can have 2, the second orbit or L shell can have 8, and M shell can have 18 electrons, etc. The electrons present in the outermost shell of an atom are called valence electrons, and the shell which valence electrons occupy is called the valence shell. A molecule is in general a group of two or more atoms that is chemically bonded together. Atoms combine chemically by external forces such as heat and light. This leads to the formation of molecules. During the formation of a molecule, atoms lose their valence electrons or gain electrons from other atoms. For instance, if two pieces of wax are to be joined, they are heated. After heating, the two pieces are pressed together to form a single structure. Here, heat is the chemical factor which is responsible for joining the molecules of wax pieces. There are two main types of bonds, covalent and ionic. If a molecule is made up of atoms of the same element, it is called a homoatomic molecule. If the molecule is made up of atoms of different elements, it is called a heteroatomic molecule. Things to remember. Building blocks of matter that we see in the universe are atoms. Protons, neutrons and electrons constitute an atom. Protons have a positive charge and neutrons.